What's up? Welcome back to... Before I get started, I do want to preface this video by saying you're probably not going to like the answer that I have to this question of long-form content versus short-form content. I hope you stick around to watch this video, but also prepare to be disappointed. YouTube used to have a limit on how long videos could be. They maxed out at 10 minutes. Back then, a five-minute video was considered too long by most viewers, including myself. I had to really like a creator to spend more than three minutes watching a video from them. And even once the limit increased to 15 minutes in July of 2010, you were hard pressed to find any creator uploading anything longer than eight minutes. But back then, popular videos were things like sketches and vlogs. The rest is a gray area as far as when YouTube fully extended it to where you can upload two hours, three hours, days worth of content and live streaming. There was no official announcement. It seems like it was a slow rollout. And if you try to look at just straight statistics, those are hard to judge because so much of it is children's content. The most viewed and highest grossing kind of content on YouTube is children's content. And I'm not here to talk about children's content. That is a mammoth. I could not be I could not begin to tackle that. I was able to find a few stats on people who are 18 and over. I read that the average viewer who's 18 and older spends about 41 minutes per day on YouTube. And I doubt these people are watching three minute videos back to back for nearly an hour. Maybe they are and I need to just start releasing my videos in like 15 parts. I found an article that was written this year, 2021. When we look at the most watched videos on YouTube in 2021, every single video in the top 10 is either a music video or a children's song. Why? When you think about it, both of these types of content have virtually infinite replay value. If you watch an educational video or even a vlog from your favorite content creator, chances are you'll only watch it a single time, maybe twice if you're especially invested or over and over and over again until you die if it's Jenna Marbles. Music videos have always kind of dominated the charts on YouTube. The only relatively new factor is children's content. I know that even I personally haven't been keeping up with a lot of my favorite creators lately, but I have been keeping up with music videos, partially because music videos are one of, if not my favorite form of content to consume, but also because I got behind on a lot of creators last year and now I feel kind of overwhelmed on what I need to watch to catch up. So many people that I like to watch have sort of little inside jokes in their videos and references to videos in the past. So I feel like if I were to start just watching now that I would be missing out on something. So it kind of creates this never ending cycle of oh, I'm behind on this video so I don't want to watch the new one and then I don't watch the new one and I get more behind. Of course, vlogging continues to top the charts. Uh, most of them being between 10 and 15 minutes long. Can I help you? And people have sought out that kind of content for a really long time and the pandemic only made that desire for connection and soothing content grow. However, shorter videos have always had a strong foothold in media. They're like potato chips to snack on. You can gorge yourself on them and honestly go for it, do who am I to judge? But eventually you need a solid meal, AKA a longer video. I think media is cyclical. Apps like Vine will dominate for a while and make it seem like longer videos are dying off. And then people will lose interest in the shorter videos as some of their favorite creators also want to make longer content. Then those longer videos become popular again because people want to watch 30 minute vlogs with their favorite TikTokers or hour and a half documentaries like Shane Dawson would make. And say what you will about him, but you have to admit that he did have millions by the neck for a good while, dedicating hours of their time to watch his videos. Of course, the main argument for long form versus short form content is our attention spans are getting shorter. We, are, we can't focus on anything for very long. And that's true, but that's also always been true. We've always been prone to wanting instant satisfaction, instant gratification. People will say our attention spans are getting shorter while also binging an entire season of a TV show in one sitting. That used to not be accessible. You used to have to just hope that some channel would eventually play a marathon of something. Now we choose to sit down and dedicate hours, entire days of our time to one thing and focus on that one thing. Movies continue to get longer. I feel like back in the day, a two hour movie was considered way too long. Now two hours is the standard. We keep coming back to the theaters to watch Marvel movies that are two, two and a half, three hours long because we care about those things. We want to dedicate our time to it. It all depends on the kind of content. Some things are worth dedicating hours of your life to, others are only worth 15 seconds. Neither is inherently wrong. And I think what we think is worth our time changes constantly. So after Vine died, there was kind of a boom in commentary style videos, most of them being from ex Viners like Cody Ko, Drew Gooden, Danny Gonzalez, Noel Miller, the list goes on. And part of me thinks that maybe that form of content. It has its main people that people want to watch, but there's not really new upcomers. People have the voices they like 
and that's about it. And commentary slash documentaries were the longest videos you would find on YouTube. And to bring it back to TikTok, they just added a three minute long video feature. It used to be just a 15 second limit, then they pushed it to one minute and now it's three. Maybe they'll continue to increase it, maybe not. And that will just continue to drive traffic to YouTube as TikTokers desire to make longer content for their fans. That's basically what I meant when I said you're not gonna like my answer to this question because it's nothing sensational. It's not proof that our minds are rotting and poor out of our ears, that our attention spans are shot, that YouTube is dying, because um, let's be honest, as much as we might like YouTube, the idea of this monolith crashing to the ground is intriguing. We always want to know, is this it? Is this the end of YouTube? Is something finally going to take it out? And so far, I don't think anything is. The closest rival would be Vimeo, and uh, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I didn't even touch on Twitch now that I think about it. I mean, Twitch is days of content, and people will sit and watch nearly the entire stream, if not the entire stream. Maybe they use it just to fall asleep too. Either way, it's being consumed in some way or another. Our attention spans, I don't think, are getting shorter. I think we just forget that humans evolved to get our needs met quickly. I mean, that's why we crave like sweeter foods because our bodies want the quickest way to consume as many calories as possible for survival. Editing me here. I know I said that both forms of content are not inherently wrong and I stand by that. However, I do think I should have touched on the amount of consumption. So I think both forms have negative impacts when consumed too much. And I think that's vaguely general knowledge. I don't think consuming too much of short bites of media is necessarily worse than sitting and watching a whole season of a TV show. I do think that being chronically online is something that is more likely to happen to someone who is on TikTok too much, for example. Depends on the kind of content you're watching. I think too, depending on the kind of TikToks you're watching, it's such a nuanced topic. But I do think I should have said in my video that we as a people are consuming too much media as a whole. I think we're spending too much time either watching TikToks or watching YouTube videos or Netflix. Not to bring up a dead meme, but I do think we need to go outside, maybe touch some grass uh, a little more often, just in general, not consume as much content when it comes to digital media. I don't think necessarily you can read too many books depending on the kind of book and how it influences the way you think. I don't think we can consume too much art by walking through art galleries. I mean, there's there's no such thing as black and white in this life. Everything has gray areas, and I think that consuming media is one of those things. So there is no definite right or wrong answer to this question of what you consume and how it affects you. But I do think it's important for me to say that, though I specifically said in the video that I don't think short form or long form content are inherently wrong in and of themselves, uh, I should have said that we are still consuming too much of both of those things and that that is what's causing the harm to us as a people, as a society, a culture, and not so much the actual content itself. Thanks. I don't think YouTube is going anywhere anytime soon, and I don't think TikTok is going anywhere anytime soon. I think they both serve their purposes. I think humans will continue to consume bite-sized content and also hours of content. Sorry to disappoint, but it's not as sensational as I thought it was going to be when I started this video. I was excited to make it. I thought I was gonna discover something revolutionary about the future of YouTube and the future of TikTok and the future is that it's fine. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you hit dislike and don't you dare leave a comment. Stop. Stop it. I see you typing stop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Put my foot in my mouth.